Let's address arguably the most common question asked by those entering the world of cybersecurity. Do I need to learn programming? So we'll look at the arguments from both sides. And then if you do decide you do indeed want to start learning how to read and write code or just improve on what you already know, we'll look at what you should be focusing on and which technologies are going to give us the most return on our time investments. As always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe and let's dive in. Now, again, with the Marmite, some people love it, some people hate it, but as the number one language in web development, I would say that JavaScript is essential. It's going to help you with the front end when you're analyzing behavior, looking for hidden endpoints and identifying vulnerabilities. And of course, we have Node.js for the back end as well. Now, it's also useful if you have ambitions to become a red teamer because popping alert one isn't going to cut it. You'll need to be able to attack users with cross-site scripting and use JavaScript to carry out attacks such as session writing or deploying keyloggers to be successful. And with the rise of Node.js, you're getting a lot more out of your study time too. So what are some useful resources that we can use? Well, I usually recommend the following. Read Code Camp as its name suggests, is completely free and has interactive challenges so that you can reinforce what you're learning. And the Odin project is also a great place to start as it has pathways to cover things like HTML, CSS, Node, and JavaScript. And one of the resource that I stumbled upon recently is javascript.info. And I'm personally using this as a reference as the search is really handy, but you could just step through the modules to learn JavaScript as well. Next up, we have Python which has emerged as a dominant programming language in many fields, including cybersecurity. This is likely due to its flexibility, readability, and extensive library support. I'd say one of the biggest factors though for its popularity in the field is the ability to solve complex problems and automate tasks very quickly. This is very useful for penetration testers, application security engineers, and in other fields too. Many courses in our field actually cover an introduction to Python too, so there's no shortage of resources. And it's also useful to consider that a course tailored to penetration testing will be more focused on content useful in your day-to-day -day, rather than learning something that might be useful for another role. Let's say somebody doing data analysis. Some resources I'd recommend to get you started are the Ultimate Python Study Guide, which is freely available over on GitHub. Or if you want to pick up something that's more specific to cybersecurity, check out the Python 101 for Hackers over on the TCM Academy page. Now we come to a fork in the road. With skills in Python and JavaScript, you may not need to dive any deeper. And I suspect for most of you, you should be all good to go. It's likely that you can now troubleshoot basic code written in other languages and also demonstrate and apply securities concepts from an application in one language to another. Even if you've never written a line of PHP, you probably can understand what type juggling is and successfully exploit it. However, if you're an application security engineer working with a specific technology such as Java, then it makes sense to dive into the world of Java. Or if you want to become a security researcher, then likely your journey would also continue into a server-side programming language of your choice. So at this stage, you really need to think about where you're going and what you need to get there. Unfortunately, I can't answer that question for you, but I can give you some advice. Make sure what you're learning from now on is relevant to your immediate or future plans and proactively apply the skills you've learned. If you can whip up a script that will do something better or more efficiently, write it and you'll be surprised how often you come back to old bits of code and reuse them for things in the future. And if you want to go even further, contributing to open source projects is a great way to give back to the community. It'll help improve tools that you use in your day-to-day -day work and also improve your development skills. It's also a really interesting way to gain real insights into how security issues arise because you will also make mistakes as you write code. Now for my bonus tip, I mentioned code review at least a couple of times during this video and wanted to share some resources on this as it's a skill that can be tricky to get started with. Your best bet is to start with small snippets of code and then slowly work your way to larger code bases. The main things to remember is that your goal is to always try and understand what's going on. If you can understand the code, you will find vulnerabilities. And there are two main approaches that I personally take when reviewing applications. First, I'll look for dangerous functions and security controls. Things like eval, dynamic SQL, session token creation, file type validation, 
and so on. Then I work backwards from here to understand, first of all, is user input being passed in? And secondly, the path it takes to get there. There are some great introductory videos on the OWASP DevSlop YouTube channel to get started with this. And Pentester Lab, whilst requires a subscription, I think has the best set of challenges that I've seen to work through. Now, code review isn't for everyone, but if you're looking to get started, then I hope these resources help. So here we have some really basic PHP. And even though this is a very short snippet, if I was reviewing some code, line three would definitely catch my attention as it's reading from dollar sign underscore get, which is a super global associative array that holds data passed to the script from the URL. In a nutshell, user input is being used without validation. So instead of passing this script something it expects, like English or Spanish or Nihongo, we could pass in something like dot dot slash config slash db and potentially read credentials from the database configuration file. There are actually many ways to exploit this vulnerability depending on the situation, but I hope it's a nice simple example if you didn't see local file inclusion before. In this case, we followed the user inputs into the application and found out where it ended up. But in a larger code base, you might have seen line eight and then worked backwards from there to understand where the variable was initialized and where the data came from. Finally, if you still have questions about your journey into web app pen testing or application security engineering, drop into one of our live streams that happens every Tuesday. You can find us on Twitch, YouTube, or LinkedIn, and there is always a section dedicated to answering your questions, followed by some learning where we might walk through a specific vulnerability or technique, and then usually finish up with a little CTF challenge at the end, just for fun. We always appreciate you dropping in. Another option is the TCM Discord. There's a dedicated channel for web app pen testing and many others to explore too. The community is really solid and welcoming and we do our best to support you as much as we can. So that's it for this video. And I really hope this helps you achieve two things. First, do you actually need to learn to write code? It's a skill that's useful, but it's not for everyone. And the second, where to go to get started. And remember, consistency is the key to everything. Doing a little bit each day will yield amazing results over time. If you enjoyed the video, then don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you have questions, then I'll catch you on the live stream. See you next time.